I'm Julian here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make Witch House, Crystal Castles, Clams Casino, Salem, Crime Style. If you go on this video, you can get this entire track template linked at the top of the description on my website. All the drums, MIDI, synth presets, the project file, all of that's available right there for a super affordable price. Really is going to help you guys get started and make some really great music. Definitely go ahead and grab that. I promise you will not be disappointed. This is really going to help you guys out. I wish there was something like this back in the day when I was trying to learn this stuff. Thanks for the support, everybody. And let's dive in. Alright, so we're at 132 BPM and the first thing we got is the drums. So you could kind of split this into like main drums and then kind of background stuff, right? Like, so we'd probably have the main drums would be like these. Right, so we got a nice hard hitting trap kick. You can see in the waveform, it's an insane kick. And I'm even boosting the mids a little bit to just get a bit more punch out of it. We get the snare, you know, I drag the start time forward a little to get to like a little bit more punch and a little bit of reverb and distortion plus this clap. So you put those together and you get that massive hit, plus some hi-hats. Kind of like dancing back and forth with each other. And then for the background sounds, so we got like, you know, almost like a Zaytoven snare or something like that. And then we got this little hi-hat that just pops in. So it's like you're getting these. And then see, this is just that last thing over top of it to give it a little bit more rhythm. Now, as far as the actual drum group goes, a lot of what you're hearing really has to do with processing on the whole group. Like if I turn all these effects off, see the drums are still smacking like very hard hitting, but obviously like when you add that, Yeah, and I think it's because like a lot of this style, you know, a lot of what you hear in this style is texture, right? Like this is a pretty basic trap pattern with some stuff kind of like a little bit different with the hi-hats. But obviously then when you take it and you want to do this big witch house kind of crunchy sort of sound, a lot of what that is going to come from really is multiple sounds coming together into processing at once. Because when you do that, you can hear stuff gets kind of like pushed together like with the drum bus here. It's like the hi-hats kind of duck out of the way when the kick hits and then the snare gives you this big reverb that gets ducked by the kick again like there's a lot of little things that happen with this group processing that even if I sh if I sat there and tried to do all of this individually to each one of these it's like yeah a lot of what you hear in this is like these people they will make a drum pattern like this maybe some hip hop drums or whatever and then you know the art is coming from taking that and then processing it further so we're starting here with a little bit of chorus you know it just kind of gives it a little bit of a crazy texture plus that feedback's up so you're getting like that you know that metallic thing we got a bit of redux Subtle, but just cuts off some of the highs, makes it a little bit more like crunchy. We get this little bit of high end boost and then low cut on this EQ8 here. And then some drum bus. Here's without that. And with it. You can see it pretty much hits about as hard. I mean, it hits a little harder with the drum bus, but it just kind of glues it all together. And that compression works really well, too. If we turn this up more, you can really hear what it's doing, but we got this down a bit. So then we have the bass. So this is following the chord progression, right? It's basically just kind of establishing the root notes of that. So the progression that we're doing here is A major, F sharp minor, C sharp minor. So if we're in the key of A major here, this would be like root note, major sixth, and then the major third. 
We got a major third down there, but it kind of like resolves to it. And then you could also kind of look at this as C-sharp minor, so then that would be like root note, fourth, sixth. But yeah, simple progression, right? You know, very witch house. For the sound, it's pretty much like a standard re-space, but again, there's a little bit more sauce at the end to give it some more flavor. So we've got, you know, a big saw wave, a bit of the sub oscillator, a ton of unison, and then a low pass filter. You notice the low pass, we got a really high resonance. See how it's less like crunchy and analog without that? If you boost that, you can create this nice overtone, and that's going to work better with the distortion, too. Then we got a little bit of hybrid reverb with like a really short decay in size, so you're not really hearing that much reverb. It's just adding a bit of like texture to it, and then a bit of vinyl distortion. Here's about that with it. So this can be really good for getting these kind of textures, too. Then we make sure you put it in mono, the stereo setting can mess up your phase like so fast. So we got that, then we got this little pad. So this is following that same progression, the A major, F sharp minor, C sharp minor, that I showed you with the reef bass. It's the same progression, and then we're using voices from that, those chords. Like in this case, for example, it's literally just root note fifth and then third. Here it's root note fifth and third. But then you notice I started to get a little creative with the melodies around it. And that's what I'd recommend doing. Like have a progression like this, and then find voices in that scale that are really close together that work, that are close to the notes in that chord. Like this up top here, this was already the minor third of that chord. So then to move down to the ninth of that chord and then the fifth it's like they're all still in key but it's just like creating a bit of a melody out of the chords which is not hard if you start with the progression for the sound here what this is it's a saw wave with a ton of sync and then the sync is being moved with an LFO so it's just giving you this like insane blown out kind of synth sound. We got a bunch of shimmer unison. I'll turn off the effects. Here's what it sounds like coming right out of the synth. Then I have this amp, which is really important. If you're gonna do this on chords or something like this, then we make sure you blend it right. That's only at 28%. Because when you turn it all the way up, it's just gonna become noise but it can add a nice texture at the right amount. We get some echo, which is definitely good for the genre because it gives you that more warm kind of analog texture. Drum bus, which is just like pushing it into like unreal territory. It's only at 46% and then a high pass filter so it doesn't get in the way of the bass. Then we have this like kind of counter melody with some chords. So it sounds kind of crazy on its own because it's like, it's not super musical if you were to just break this down. Like, you know, here it's like, we're just playing octaves. This is like a minor chord and then another minor chord there. So it is pretty musical, but it's really about how these notes are going to interact against these chords that are already being established. Like, you hear how that sounds so big and epic with this? And it's just like that perfect counter melody, but like made out of chords. So, what we're doing here is, yeah, it's these notes which are all inside of that A major scale I was telling you about. So really it's just a matter of like having the scale and then just find some notes that are in it and try putting them against the chords you already have and I promise it'll work pretty quickly. This is one of those things that can seem crazy until you actually try to do that and you realize that it's like, you know, it's pretty plug and play if you know what you're working with. Now, for the actual sound, it's made with operator. It's this FM pad where we've got some sine waves just FMing each other, but a bit of detune and they're all at different octaves. We got a high pass filter and it's being key tracked. Reverb and then another high pass at the end. And the last sound is the vocal chop. 
So what we're doing is we're starting with this vocal. Right the ooh. It honestly sounds nothing like how it ended up, but basically what I'm doing is I'm just warping that really heavily inside of the Ableton Simpler here. Right, we're distorting it. It's basically just distorting this echo on this, but then what's happening is it's gliding, and it's also playing up very high. Like, if we put it down lower... <laughs> You can hear that it's different in other octaves and it's closer to the original. But yeah, so I put it up high and then it's just a very simple melody. I think that's the real key to this. It's like the fact that this is almost like a logo. Like you just have this uh, 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 like that. You know, and then you can do all this crazy stuff over here. But then this vocal over it is that thing that's just gonna... You know? And that's really happening largely as a product of just how simple it is. And also, the other thing with that is the call and response. You have a call... And then a response. And yeah, so that's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get this full project file, samples, MIDI, presets, the entire template from this video is available at the top of the description. Thank you very much for the support, everybody. Every little bit helps. And I will see you tomorrow with another video.